So continuing with the cases of uh, uh, brain imaging and arteriosclerosis cases, left is the axial fair MRI image and it shows the mild atrophy and uh, confluent periventricular and punctate subcortical white matter hyperintensity which is typical for arteriosclerosis, uh, that is chronic small vessel disease in this elderly patient with uh, mild cognitive impairment. Right is the axial DTI trace image and uh, it shows no areas of diffusion restriction uh, to suggest the acute ischemia in this elderly patient. Arteriosclerosis uh, may mask an acute ischemic event, so DWI or DTI sequences are helpful to exclude the acute ischemia in this patient population. So left is a, again axial T2-weighted MRI sequence in a patient with chronic hypertension and it shows confluent regions of periventricular hyperintensity related to arteriosclerosis. There are chronic lacunar infarcts visible and a chronic hypertensive basal ganglia hemorrhage. Right is the axial GRI MR sequence and it shows uh, hyperintensity related to the hemocytrine along the chronic hypertensive hemorrhage. Uh, multiple foci of susceptibility artifact or blooming are seen in the deep grey nuclei and white matter, uh, which are related to micro hemorrhages uh, from chronic hypertension. So, the left image is the axial non contrast CT scan and it shows diffuse atrophy and extensive confluent periventricular and subcortical hyperdensities, uh, which are typical for a severe arteriolosclerosis in this elderly patient with dementia. Right is the axial CT scan at the level of the corona radiata and it shows extensive involvement of the white matter by arteriolosclerosis. There is chronic small vessel ischemia in this patient with the long standing hypertension and a clinical diagnosis of vascular dementia uh, that is Biswanger type Biswanger type vascular dementia left is axial flare MRI sequence showing a mild periventricular and uh, subcortical white matter hyperintensity related to the arteriolosclerosis in a 51 year old woman uh, with cerebral amyloid angiopathy right is the axial GRI sequence showing the typical peripheral distribution of hyperintensity or blooming related to the susceptibility artifact from blood products in the cortex and uh, subcortical white matter uh, of this patient with amyloid angiopathy. Also noted is that the deep gray nuclei are relatively spared. So left is axial T2 MRI uh, image showing the typical patchy uh, central hyperintensity in the pons uh, related to the arteriolosclerosis in this patient uh, with a history of hypertension. Right is the axial fair MRI sequence in a 65 year old a normotensive man and it shows a few punctate foci of hyperintensity in the subcortical white matter. Note the mild diffuse uh, volume loss and a typical uh, which is a typical finding in a normal aging brain. Left is the graphic image, axial graphic image of the left temporal bone uh, which is showing a classic uh, picture of aberrant internal carotid artery which is uh, rising along the posterior cochlear uh, promontory and crossing along the medial middle ear wall to rejoin the horizontal uh, petrous uh, uh, ICA that is internal carotid artery. At the point of uh, reconnection to the horizontal uh, petrous ICA, stenosis is often present. Right is the axial CTA image, that is CT angiography image through the middle ear and it shows the looping apparent, apparent internal carotid on the low cochlear promontory. Note the caliber change as the apparent internal carotid artery rejoins the normal horizontal uh, segment of the internal carotid artery. So these are graphic images. Uh, the left one is the lateral graphic of a normal adult cervical and petrous uh, ICA, uh, which is uh, showing the inferior, which reveals that the inferior tympanic artery is branching off the ascending pharyngeal artery. Uh, it's passing into the temporal bone to anastomose with the very small uh, carotico tympanic artery on the cochlear promontory. Right is again uh, the graphic image, a lateral. Uh, image which is showing the failure of the cervical ICA to develop uh, with the dotted lines they, they, that is shown with the dotted lines with the ascending pharyngeal inferior tympanic and carotico tympanic arteries providing an alternative collateral arterial channel uh, resulting in an apparent internal carotid artery. So the left image is the coronal uh, left temporal bone CT scan at the level of the oval window and it shows the apparent internal carotid artery as a mass 
it is uh, showing here as a mass located on the cochlear promontory uh, and uh, resembling a glomus tympanicum paraganglioma. The accidental biopsy of the apparent internal carotid artery may have devastating consequences. So that's why this image is being shown here. That do not confuse it uh, uh, with the mass always. Uh, right is the axial bone CT and it reveals a smaller caliber apparent internal carotid artery which is entering the middle ear cavity through an enlarged uh, inferior tympanic canaliculus, entering the middle ear cavity through an enlarged inferior tympanic canaliculus.